You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another, well, brain-tickling episode of Ask Drone You. <laughs> uh, that's right. You've got your favorite bald-headed host, and your favorite loud mouth tangent rabbit hole <laughs> finder. That's me. My finder, name is Paul. Creator. Well, you call it what you will. <laughs> and my name is Rob. And uh, by the time that people watch this, voting day will be over. It's actually voting day today that we're recording this. Election day. Yeah. Um, so hopefully everybody voted. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to be an American because we have that right. The ability to have a say, um, I suppose we could probably debate for a year as to how much that say actually is, but we're not going to do that. We're going to be thankful for the opportunity to go cast a vote. So hopefully y'all did that. And uh, it's been a while since we've been in these chairs. Looking forward to hearing some thoughts from Paul. Deep yeah. thoughts. Yeah. I do want to say one thing. I hope our votes do count. That Netflix documentary about the 70,000 persuadables, I hope that changes this election because of like what Pippa Malmgren said about people moving out of certain states to other states that we may have a totally different setup this year. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Either way, I would ask all of you, whatever your beliefs are, don't forget this one thing. Please, 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 please don't forget this one thing. We are all human. Division just hurts the people at the bottom. It really does. It just, uh, one time I heard a story that um, if, if the way that American wealth works, if there are $10 on the table, the guy, there's three people in the room, uh, there's the guy at the top, and he takes eight of the $10, and then there's everyone else at the bottom, like 90% of the people, and they fight for the, the two remaining dollars, right? So just don't forget, division hurts us all. And uh, at a time where division is peaking, or maybe it's not peaking, I don't know, maybe it keeps going. Just remember empathy, empathy, empathy. We are all human, we all make mistakes. And as someone who grew up in DC, something I'd like to share with all of you is none of us really know what's going on. And that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> so if that doesn't make you feel better, I don't think that's news to anybody. Yeah, I don't frankly. think so either. But anyway, we're grateful to be here with you. So thanks. Let's have some fun. We're going to answer a question today. I just want to say um, really quick, today's show is actually sponsored by Yours Truly. That's right. Rob and I implemented a new university style class uh, where we're teaching on the evenings. And actually, I'm even going to be teaching remotely from Durango, which is going to be fun. Oh. Even tested the connection already. We're good. So... Yeah, I'm excited for this. So if you're like me and uh, maybe you want to take some mapping classes, you want to learn everything that you need to know to confidently walk up to a project manager and eloquently explain the value of drone mapping, progression reports, the value it provides, the liability it limits, and the money it saves. If you want to do that confidently, you want to fly confidently, and you want to provide deliverables confidently, then don't miss this class. Our drone mapping boot camp has been expanded once again. Uh, this is I'm teaching this class just to just to clarify too. This is going to be in the evenings twice a week for I think it's eleven or twelve weeks. Uh, we take a break for Thanksgiving and no, Christmas. Like six or seven weeks it's twice a week. Six or it's seven like 11, weeks. Eleven, twelve sessions. Ah, that's right. That's about. right. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Um, but long story short is we're trying to break things up. This way we can also give you some homework. We can do some practice. We can go over the exercises in a little bit more detail. We can even kind of uh, talk about them more. We're trying to create a little bit more engagement and also create an alternative for people who are kind of, they're, they're, they're tapped out right now. They're, they're, they're not able to take four days and digest material. And maybe some, some of us are chronically tired. I mean, I have to be the first to admit, uh, I think I realized I was chronically tired uh, last week, took a week off. That's why you didn't hear many shows. And that's natural. We're all human. So if you want to join me twice a week for 12 sessions and go over the mapping boot camp that has deliverables included, and we teach you on drone deploy and we teach you on PIX4D mapper, PIX4D capture, PIX4D react, um, and well... I'm thinking about doing one more class, but we shall see what happens. So I, uh, I'm thinking about a creative modeling class, Rob, but we'll talk about that later. Ooh, that sounds interesting. So 
Going back to it, if you want to join me, check out the website, droneu.education, and check out what we've got for the events section. Join us for this new style of class. We've never done this before. It's brand new. I'm looking forward to it because I really love teaching these classes, and I love the engagement I learn as well. So if you're like me, you love to learn and you love to have fun while you're doing it because you want to gain confidence, because you want to do more with your drone because you love to fly. Well, don't miss this class because, well, it might be the last time I do it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, he doesn't knows. know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah, well, yeah, all we know is it will be the first time. It kind of reminds me of that slightly stupid song. Nobody knows. Do, 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 do. Nobody knows. <laughs> Kind of like the election. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Full That's circle. True. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, um, here we go. Hi, guys. Sean Cullen here from British Columbia, Canada. First off, thanks for all you do. I've learned a ton from becoming a member of DroneU. My question is regarding Vortex Ring State. Is that a real thing for smaller drones? I understand uh, aerodynamically what you're talking about. But having flown my uh, Mavic 2 pretty aggressively in a bunch of different directions, I've never encountered that. In speaking with some helicopter pilot friends of mine who are quite high hour guys, they suggest that short of, you know, zero wind and flying straight down really, really aggressively, it'd probably be really hard to actually get into a vortex ring state with something as small as a Mavic drone. Just interested on your thoughts on the subject. Is this something that applies mainly to larger drones? Um, or have I just been lucky that I haven't uh, gotten into it? Is this is something I only came across after uh, flying my drone for uh, quite a while? Once again, thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Sean. I have to admit that this is a question I've had for a long time because I've always just thought, well, that's kind of what the rules of flight say that we here at Drone U recommend. And it seems like it's a safer way to go about landing. And so I've always been careful about it, but I've never actually tested it and just gone straight down hard to see what would happen. Well, I've seen it happen plenty of times at trainings. <laughs> Have you? Oh, yeah, with all, all sorts of drones. Um, huh. I would say that uh, some particular prop combinations actually cause the problem more so than the aircraft uh, aerodynamics. I mean, aerodynamics can definitely have an effect. Size can have an effect. But at the end of the day, we're still following the same rules of flight, you know, cruising, right. lift, et cetera. Um, so m it's important to understand that over the course of the development of the drones that we've had in the drone industry, vortex ring state and the propensity for it to happen have gone significantly down. Why? Uh, one is software control, uh, two is limiting user input, and three is, and this is actually a major parameter that is even uh, when you hack your drone through drone hacks, this is one of the main parameters it asks you. And this is where it can get really dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. But you can, uh, the, the max descent speed is limited on all the drones so that this doesn't happen. Mm. Um, so even, I mean, if you're like 20 feet off the ground and you just like rail that thing down, straight down, yeah, it'll happen. But honestly... Uh, it, it's DJI, I feel like, has done actually a pretty good job of, of inhibiting this from happening by limiting the vertical speed. Hmm. So, so when you say it will happen, what is it? What actually crashing happens? Crashing from vortex ring state. So essentially what happens is as we have our drone, imagine a cylinder of air below the drone. And, and, and essentially think of like the drone is floating on that cylinder of air. And when you go straight down, what you're essentially doing is sucking up your own cloud that you're, you're levitating on, let's just say for an analogy's sake, okay? When you go straight down, you suck up that your own air, and as soon as you suck up your own air, if you try to elevate, you actually make the problem worse. Hmm. Wait, 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 okay, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, buttercup doesn't work? Not in vortex ring state. Ooh. It's the only, uh, my, only instance it doesn't work, and that's why I don't tell my, people about it. My drone, my drone it shattered my, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I thought it worked for everything. Well, I mean, there's always exceptions. There are always exceptions. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, let's be a scientist here. It depends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, here's the thing. I noticed a big difference in vortex ring state issues from the Phantom 2 to the Phantom 3. 
Huge difference. Also, if you notice most of the DJI drones, the motors, and even notice this on the uh, the FreeFly drones too, all of the motors are cantered, okay? That's not perfectly plumbed to the ground. The motors are cantered to direct the prop wash in an angular state. What does this do? One, increases stability. Two, reduces directional velocity of direction and velocity are kind of one and the same. Ugh. Anyway, um, that was a poor choice of words. Essentially, when you canter the motors, you are not, let's say, funneling all the air into one particular section. You're essentially like moving it in other ways, thus reducing um, the prop wash effect. When you reduce the prop wash effect, you reduce vortex ring state. Now, that being said, for our caller, I challenge you to fly your drone inside and fly your drone, like literally, if you can see our table, halfway over the edge of the table. Try to stop the drone from moving, even in GPS, VPS, whatever. You won't be able to stop it. Why? Vortex ring state. You have half of your prop wash on the table and half of it over the table. Your drone, no matter what, is going to get pushed forward. But that's different because you've got a solid surface below you. Correct. So are you saying that this really wouldn't necessarily be an issue until you got lower? Or it's more, yes. it's more a function of how fast you go down, which DJI and probably others Both. have mitigated against. Yes. Well, inside though, it's harder to mitigate against, but yes, they have right, mitigated right. against it. Yes, it will cause problems. Yes, when you're lower, all of the above, yes. Uh, but just to really kind of summarize this, Vortex Ring State is all about the one rule that we teach during our drone operations course, which is never fly straight down. You should always be flying in some sort of pattern, in some sort of, I always explain it like a roof, rise over run, right? Because while the propensity has been reduced, there are still certain circumstances um, that can really cause vortex ring state. And they're rare and they're few and they're far between. But experienced pilots, the more and more you fly, the more and more you're going to run into these issues. Okay, and you need to know how to stop the vortex ring state. Guess what? Check it out in my in my operations course because I go over the two very specific ways that you can stop vortex ring state in its tracks. Now, you're going to deal with this problem a lot more on the heavy lift drones. Uh, you're going to deal with this problem a lot more on the more manual cinematography drones. Um, you'll see, you'll feel this problem as soon as you fly Cinewhoop. You'll be like, whoa, what's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, and which is actually kind of a cool feeling. Um, that being said, is that's just raw power. There's it's not being mitigated through the software like with a DJI, mm -hmm. like a Phantom or something. I mean, you can set it up that way, uh, but, but generally it's not correct. And if yeah. you're flying acro mode too uh, with FPV, you'll really feel it. So, have there been software provisions to help this with consumer drones? Yes. Is it possible it will still happen? Yes. Should you make a habit of just never flying straight down to pretty much eliminate the problem of ever happening? Yes. With the one exception of what we tell everyone, 10 feet off the pad. 10 feet off the landing pad, straight down is okay. The key here, and I feel like I'm Ted Wilson right now, the key here, ladies and gentlemen, is slow, <laughs> consistent, okay? Also, this is why I hate landing protection. I hate that feature on all DJI drones because it, it changes the sensitivity and gains of the sticks right before you're about to land. And if you're having an emergency, like if you've got a battery voltage error or something, it can really screw things up. So uh, eliminate the problem perpetually. Make a note, never fly straight down. Even if you're doing those crane shots, right? Like we talk about in our advanced aerial videography class, you can just add a little bit of pitch back and forth, not obviously back and forth, that'll ruin the shot one direction, right? And just maybe pitch back just a little bit, problem solved. Mm -hmm. That's actually how you make those crane shots smoother. Hmm. Anyway. All right. Interesting. Okay. So Sean, you were lucky. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> the reality is it sounds as though it's uh, it's good practice to avoid flying straight down just in case. But the risk is probably with most consumer drones that people are flying relatively low, but why risk it? Be smart about it. That's exactly right. And here at DroneU, we're all about teaching you habits to build systems that create routines so you don't even think about these things. You're yeah. just automatically eliminating risk because you're a G. And if you want to be a master chief pilot, then check out Drone U. 
maybe check out our new props program. Yeah, another way I think to look at it, maybe from our perspective, um, I mean, putting yourself in our shoes is to say, okay, Drone, you could not make a big deal of this and say the risk is so low. Why are they even talking about it? Well, what if we don't talk about it and then it does affect you? And then you're saying, well, why didn't Drone you tell me about that in their operations class or in their flight mastery class? So there are things like this that it's incumbent upon us to make sure you understand and then you do with that information what you will. Yeah. Also, we want to really make sure that we're not only helping people that are just coming into this, just trying to gain more confidence, just trying to get better at their business, but help people are, who are systemically successful drone pilots. Because the more that you do a risky thing, the higher the propensity or probability that bad things are going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it's just a game of probability. It is. And, and it's a game of we all have different risk tolerances. So many out there perhaps listening might be saying, this is so stupid. We're, why are we even talking about this? The risk is so low. Their risk tolerance is higher than the person listening that says, you know what, I'm going to not fly straight down anymore. <laughs> right. So it's just it's just a different perspective. And uh, the first person I just described is probably pretty rare. I would also say don't test this uh, flying straight down over water because you mix the reflectivity of the water with the VPS mm. and you kind of mess with the software when you do that. I've watched so many drones go down that way. So many. There you go. Lots from boaters too. Yeah. Because they don't think of these things. They're like, oh, well, it's not a big deal. It's like, well, you're, uh, you're flying a robot. Why is that a big deal? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, it's it's like a lot of things. It's not a big deal until it is. That's right. <laughs> and that's why, you know, this, okay, I'm just the last thing, very, very small tangent. So for you tangent people, get out of here. All <laughs> right. Get off your tangent. Okay. <laughs> um, really quick. One of the main things, in fact, Jana and I talked a lot about this. One of the main things from the penitentiary system, from, um, other forms of confinement, jail, whatever you want to call it. One of the main themes that has been proven psychologically to help people get out of that perpetual system is by thinking in life like you think about chess. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten moves down the road. Hmm. Just like you're driving, Rob. <laughs> yeah. So my, uh, that's an inside joke. Anyway, uh, so my point is, is that if you handle your business and your flying skills where you're thinking about, uh, you know, things happening down the line, you're planning that as you fly more and more, you're going to run into new situations, new variables and new problems. The more that you fly, the higher the probability it's going to happen, right? So it's important to think about five, six, seven, eight steps down the, down the line because it's going to make you a better pilot. It's going to make you a better business person, might even make you more successful in life. But one thing is for sure, it's going to make you think about consequences of decisions in a new and unique way. Frankly, I could probably use a little bit of rehashing mm. in some of this uh, psychological behavior analysis. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, good stuff. And but and these uh, what what I'll term smaller issues, if that's fair, um, are building blocks, right? There, we're trying to build something a great foundation, and that's mm -mm. part of the building of the foundation. This is what I love about drones, though, is that it's a constantly new adventure. It's constantly yeah. changing. It's never the same. And for me, I love that. I'm like, yes, because uh, I I get bored easily. So, what gives you that idea? <laughs> <laughs> on that bombshell. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. If you have a question, please go to askdroneu.com. Upload that question. Also, for everyone, if you're a DroneU member, I'm going to be posting something in the group here soon about aggregating your fall photos for something that we've got coming up. And I would also like to announce that we have a very big giveaway coming up. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. I know we teased that a couple weeks ago, but we are ready. So thanks again for joining us, Rob. And I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Our production staff really appreciates it as well. So thank you again, everyone. And we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.